From homeless to superstar, Antonio Brown evolved into one of the most polarizing characters the league has ever seen. With his Hall of Fame level skills and insane antics, a player has never been so mesmerizing on and off the field. But how good was AB actually? Gotta show I am the best every time I step out here. From the beginning, the odds that Brown would ever make something of himself were basically zero. His dad, Eddie, had him at just 18 years old, before leaving A.B. and his mom, Adrienne, behind to go play football at Louisiana Tech. Not long after, Eddie and Adrienne split up. I wasn't there to help him through those struggles. As he went on to become an Arena Football League legend, leaving Adrian to raise A.B. and his younger brother all alone in the crime-infested area of Liberty City, Miami. And I come from where the areas where guys get killed, uh, the drug dealers go to jail. Life was so rough that one of A.B.'s earliest memories was watching a man steal his elementary school teacher's purse. Brown even said that as he got older, every party he went to ended in a shootout. And after Brown turned 16, matters only got worse. He had a major falling out with his mom's new husband, and he was kicked out of the house. So over the next few months, Brown bounced around, sleeping on friends' couches and sometimes even in cars. And if he was fortunate enough to come up with some money, Brown would get himself a cheap motel room. His only escape from this nightmare was playing football. On the gridiron, everything just clicked. At Miami Norland High School, despite being undersized at just 5'10", A.B. blossomed into a standout athlete. There was nothing he couldn't do on the field. He played quarterback, running back, and wide receiver, while also serving as the team's punt returner. Brown was a showstopper, as he became a two-time All-State selection. But as A.B. was shining on the field, he was seriously struggling off of it. Despite receiving strong interest from several major colleges, like Michigan State and Clemson, his grades were too low for them to offer him a scholarship. After these programs were forced to move on, Brown was set to play at Alcorn State. But once he arrived, A.B. learned that he was also ineligible there. So he packed a bag, took a Greyhound bus 19 hours to a post-grad prep school in North Carolina. There, Brown played quarterback. And in just five games, he threw for 1,247 yards and 11 touchdowns, while rushing for 451 yards and 13 touchdowns. I'm just a young kid, 18 years old, you know, just trying to be successful. He was so dominant that Florida International University offered him a scholarship. But as usual, trouble seemed to follow A.B. A dispute with a student on FIU's campus left Brown expelled, and his scholarship offer rescinded. It looked like his football dreams were over before they started, until one phone call changed everything. An assistant coach at Central Michigan University, who A.B. had met during his high school recruiting process, called him with a proposal. He told Brown that if he walked on the team as a receiver, he could potentially earn a scholarship if one opened up. With no other options, Brown took the offer and switched from quarterback to receiver. And not only did he make the team, but by the end of fall camp, Brown was offered a scholarship. After waiting for what must have felt like an eternity, he finally got to show the nation what he could do at the D1 level. As a freshman, Brown led the conference in punt and kickoff return yards, while adding in 102 receptions for over 1,000 yards. He was named the conference's Freshman Player of the Year. But most importantly, A.B. felt at home for the first time in his life. With a newfound comfort and joy, Brown was able to focus solely on football and it showed. Over his next two seasons at CMU, he torched opposing defenses, on his way to becoming the school's all-time receptions leader, fourth in receiving yards, and third in receiving touchdowns. In just three years, Brown managed to rack up 305 receptions for 3,199 yards and 22 touchdowns. And if that wasn't enough, he also rushed for 531 yards and four touchdowns. Feeling like there was nothing left to prove at CMU, he decided to forego his senior season to declare for the 2010 NFL Draft. He shocked the NFL world because analysts and scouts were projecting Brown to be only a fifth or sixth round pick. Questions loomed regarding his lack of size and the quality of talent he played against. Brown didn't care. All he needed was one team to take a chance on him. And with the 195th overall pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers became that team, making Brown the 22nd wide receiver drafted. Being passed on so many times in the draft didn't go unnoticed by Brown, who used it as inspiration for choosing his number. Eight times four is 32, he said. 32 teams looked past me, even the Steelers. So every time I go out there, it's a little added motivation. Drafted late, you know, a six-round pick. Remind me while I'm in the field that 32 teams passed up on me. 
my numbers is motivation. Despite arriving in Pittsburgh as a man on a mission, Brown was going to have to wait his turn. Heading into his rookie season, he was named the fifth receiver on the depth chart. That year, Brown barely played, appearing in just 10 games and catching 16 passes for 167 yards. For the first time on the field, he wasn't the star of the show. And this pushed A.B. to grind that much harder in the offseason to earn more playing time and targets. Then, entering the 2011 season, he was named Pittsburgh's third-string receiver. He started just three games, but he finished the year with 69 receptions for 1,100 108 yards. His shiftiness and quickness that made him so hard to guard also turned him into an elite kick returner. On his way to being named a Pro Bowler, Brown became the first player ever to, in a single season, have 1,000 returning and receiving yards. The Steelers quickly recognized that the sky was the limit in terms of his potential, so that offseason, they signed A.B. to a five-year, $42.5 million extension. Having just inked him to a deal like that, Pittsburgh then named him as one of their two starting receivers. But just when it seemed like he had officially made it big time, Brown got a painful reality check. In 2012, he battled a nagging ankle injury that kept him out of three games, and A.B. finished the season with just 787 receiving yards. The next year, he set out to prove to everyone that this was just a fluke season, and that the Steelers didn't make a huge mistake by paying him all that money. So, what did Brown do? He burned every defensive back that tried to stop him, finishing the season with 110 receptions for 1,499 yards, which were both second most in the league. A.B. also broke almost every Steelers single-season receiving record, as he received his first-team All-Pro honors for the first time and was invited back to the Pro Bowl. But Brown wasn't done yet. In 2014, he led the league in receptions and yards with 129 for 1,698. A.B. also set a career high for receiving touchdowns with 13. Putting up back-to-back -back seasons like that cemented Brown's place as not only one of the NFL's best receivers, but as one of his top players overall. Every time A.B. laced him up, it was must-see TV. From his elaborate touchdown celebrations to his dazzling catches and footwork, there was nobody in the game like him. And yet, the following year, Brown somehow took his game to another level. He again led the league in catches with 136 of them, this time for 1,834 yards and 10 touchdowns. It was one of the most impressive campaigns from a wideout in recent memory. In fact, A.B. had set the bar so high that his 2016 season was somewhat of a step back, even though he still finished with 106 catches for 1,284 yards and 12 touchdowns. That just goes to show how unstoppable and special he had been, which is why the Steelers signed him to a four-year, $68 million extension that made him the league's highest-paid receiver. And on paper, over the next two seasons, Pittsburgh seemed like geniuses for this. In 2017, A.B. snagged 101 receptions for a league-high 1,533 yards before, in 2018, putting up 104 catches for 1,297 and a league-leading 15 touchdowns. Touchdowns. Brown's sustained excellence for six straight seasons was something nobody had seen at the wideout position since Jerry Rice. He was unguardable with his toe-tap catches, ankle-breaking jukes, and game-breaking acceleration. But while A.B. had been shredding opposing defenses every Sunday, he was also tearing apart the Pittsburgh locker room with his antics. Brown had developed a reputation for being just as much of a problem as he was a talent, which says a lot. And during the 2018 season, everything came crashing down. A.B. was arrested for throwing furniture out of a 14-story building and hitting a toddler below. We circled the things falling from above. This is furniture being thrown from a 14th floor condo. And then, leading up to the season finale, he got into a blowout argument with Ben Roethlisberger. Brown skipped the Saturday practice and, as a result, was benched for the game. And to make matters worse, the Steelers missed the playoffs. By then, both A.B. and the organization were extremely fed up with each other. That season, Brown requested a trade. The Steelers reached an agreement to trade the four-time All-Pro to Oakland for a fifth-round pick and a third-round pick. And despite him coming off six straight Pro Bowl seasons in which he never had less than 100 catches or 1,200 receiving yards, Pittsburgh agreed it was time to part ways. So, in March of 2019, the Steelers traded away their second all-time leading receiver to the Raiders for a third and fifth-round pick. Pittsburgh's return in that trade was an indictment of the off-field baggage that came with Brown, not the insane production on it. 
There was no debating that A.B. could be one of the game's all-time great receivers, but the question became, would he let himself achieve that? And was it worth putting up with everything else he brought with him? For the Raiders, the answer was clear. From the moment Brown landed in Oakland, he was a distraction. A.B. missed part of training camp due to frostbite on his feet from his own cryotherapy chamber before missing more time in protest of the league's new helmet mandates. Brown also called the team's GM racial slurs and threatened to punch him in the face. Antonio Brown's not in the building today. He won't be practicing. A.B. later publicly apologized. Be out here today. I want to apologize to my teammates, organization and said he was excited to move forward, only to demand a release the following day. By this point, the Raiders had no choice but to release him. Brown was then immediately scooped up by the Patriots, but that chapter also ended before it began. Because sexual assault allegations against him surfaced, New England released A.B. after playing in just one game. If New England and Bill Belichick couldn't straighten him out, why would anyone else think they could? Brown's career seemed over when he was suspended for the first eight weeks of the 20th 2020 season for multiple violations of the league's personal conduct policy. But in the middle of that season, it was brought back to life by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. To say the Bucs were in win-now mode in their first year with Tom Brady would be an understatement. Tampa knew with TB12 under center at the age of 43, it was a race against the clock. And as crazy as A.B. was, there was no denying his otherworldly talent could potentially help. And this roll of the dice paid off for the Bucs, as Brown played a role in helping them win their first Super Bowl in almost two decades. While A.B. was no longer the same superstar from his Steelers days, he seemed more than happy to finally put aside his ego to win his first ring. That offseason, Brown and Tampa agreed to run it back with a one-year deal. But during the team's title defense, after a brief hiatus, the A.B. circus returned with a bang. In December of that season, he was suspended for three games for misrepresentation his vaccination status. Um, I think A.B. will be in some really big trouble with the league, or possibly be in some big trouble with the, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Then, in Week 17, as the team geared up for another potential postseason run, the powder keg exploded. During the third quarter against the Jets, after an argument between Brown and his coaches, he took off his shoulder pads, gloves, and shirt before running off the field into the locker room. It was a scene that looked straight out of a movie and left everyone watching speechless. Since then, Brown has yet to play another down of NFL football. And if that was his final act, what a fitting way to end his one-of-a-kind career. His six-year run from 2013 to 2018 is one of the most dominant stretches we've ever seen from a receiver, with four straight first-team All-Pro seasons during that time. He amassed totals of 928 receptions for 12,291 yards and 83 touchdowns over his 12-year career, but a large majority of those numbers came in that six-year period. Off AB's prime alone, his numbers are good enough for a Hall of Fame career, but unfortunately, those numbers just don't tell the full story.